Hello, everybody. Uh, we're happy to have you on board uh, for today's session. Um, I'm extremely glad to be welcoming you all to the session on using uh, Zoho Sales IQ's bots um, to engage and support the customers that land on your website. We hope you're all staying safe during the pandemic and all of you are on the pink of health. I'm Michelle from the Zoho Sales IQ team, and I'm going to be taking you through this very engaging session on bots, one of the most powerful features inside Zoho Sales IQ. And uh, as always, we have our product experts of the panel here to keep, your, keep uh, answering your questions, so keep them coming. Let's quickly jump into the session. Um, We'll begin with a recap. So during the last session, we had discussed in detail about uh, channels in Zoho Sales IQ to grow your audience base and uh, lead scoring and company scoring to know who your prospects are and uh, about proactive chat automation using triggers, email templates, resources to boost customer self-service, integrations with uh, Zoho applications and third-party applications and uh, also about mobile SDKs, uh, Mobilisten to connect with your mobile app uh, users. Let me tell you how I've planned out today's session. So first I'll be talking about what Zoho Sales IQ's uh, Zobot is, and uh, then about what these bots are made of, um, followed by the basics of building Zobots using uh, the Sales IQ Scripts platform, about the codeless bot that we've all been waiting for, uh, answer bots and demos of how to set them up, how uh, a few of these bots look on the website, uh, possible integrations, how to use uh, widgets and form controllers to bring all of your apps inside Zoho Sales IQ. And finally, also about plugs in Sales IQ. So without any further ado, let's get started. Let's begin with the specifics, the Zobot. So why do you need bots in your business? So every business has hundreds and thousands of customers or visitors landing on the website every single day. So there must be someone who's available 24 seven and can take over for your operators whenever they're busy or unavailable, right? This is where these bots come into play. And this is why we came up with the idea of Zobots. So what is the Zobot? It is a bot development platform that is available inside Sales IQ. And uh, with this, you can build a lot of compelling bots to automate your customer interactions. You can program these assistants to you know, respond, to act, and to qualify your customers. So basically, these robots maintain a conversation with your user in natural language. Then they understand the intent of what the user is trying to say, and then send out a response based on the business rules and data of the organization. So uh, they can be run on both websites and on mobile applications and uh, answer bots in Sales IQ work based on your resource module. So the stronger your knowledge base, the more efficient these bots will be. And we also have the most awaited codeless bot platform that will only require you to build a flowchart using drag and drop components. So it requires absolutely no code. So we are going to be talking about all of these different platforms in detail during this session. So these robots, they help you identify your uh, potential leads, the potential leads that land on your website. They help you resolve customer issues. Uh, they have the ability to assist visitors who speak different languages. They shorten your sales cycle. So basically, these robots are what uh, cutting edge teams are using to automate their marketing and other processes. So they have a super important role to play in customer experience, which is uh, really, really important in uh, today's digital economy where customers are more than willing to change uh, or switch providers or services at the drop of a hat. Now that we know what uh, bots in Sales IQ are, let me tell you how these chat bots function as fragments in the market. So first, there is a chat or a user interface for uh, user interactions on websites or mobile apps. So this is where hundreds of uh, message exchanges uh, take place. Then you need a bot engine to design the bot software. So using these engines, you can design the bot to work as per your business needs. So without the bot engine, you cannot define the functionalities of the bot or it's working. So this basically decides the flow of the bot. Then you have your business software that consists of CRM, help desk, uh, calendars, project management, etc. This is going to be necessary to store all of your visitor insights that are collected by the Chatbot. By this, I mean details like, you know, the visitor's name, email, contact number, location, and all of that. 
there are some companies that provide chat interfaces. Uh, for this, I can mention examples such as iMessage, Facebook Messenger, Telegram, Live Chat, etc. While there are some others like, uh, you know, Dialogflow, Botsify, Chatbot, and Watson that provide bot engines. And then some provide business softwares or customer databases, say your companies that provide uh, help desk, CRM, etc. And there are also a few that provide both chat interfaces and bot engines. Whereas Zoho Sales IQ offers a highly interactive and engaging live chat user interface along with audio calls and many other features on your websites and mobile apps along with a bot engine. Uh, so we have uh, super powerful platforms like Sales IQ scripts and then we have NLP platforms like uh, uh, Watson, Dialogflow, Microsoft Azure, uh, Zia skills and uh, we have answer bots that work based on your um, knowledge base and finally we also have the codeless bot that lets you do everything that you do on the uh, deluge script platform on a platform that doesn't require any code so all you have to do is just build a flowchart and let sales like you do the building for you then all of the visitor insights are stored inside sales IQ. you can also export the data that you uh, store inside sales IQ to other zoho apps in case you're using any or other external applications that you might have been using for your business so sales IQ has been designed to let you use platforms that you're familiar with that's what's great about sales IQ. so if you're an end-to-end -end google user you can choose dialogue flow those of you uh, that have been using ibm for a while can choose the watson assistant and uh, also, those of you that already have a bot engine, you can just simply integrate it with uh, the Zobot using webhooks so that, you know, you don't have to limit your building to just uh, uh, Sales IQ strips or uh, any other uh, Zoho oriented platforms. So basically, Sales IQ Zobot provides you everything under one roof so that you don't have to maintain and integrate the fragments separately. So to summarize, it's one system to rule out uh, the complexity of integration of the UI, the bot engine and your database so these are the different platforms uh, that zoho sales IQ zobot offers so you have uh, zoho platforms like uh, the answer bots the codeless bot sales IQ strips that works based on uh, deluge code and uh, then you have zia skills which is um, uh, an nlp based uh, virtual assistant creation platform then you have webhooks to integrate your bot engines with the zobot and as for external integrations, you have options like Dialogflow, uh, Watson Assistant, and Microsoft Azure. So before we move on to the next um, part of this particular session, I just want to launch a quick poll and know how many of you have actually interacted with chatbots. So I'll just give you a minute or two to uh, answer this poll. So the votes are coming in. So it looks like a majority of you have had interactions with chatbots because you know chatbots are just available on all websites these days. Uh, you know, to help operators uh, reduce operator workload, uh, to quickly assist uh, visitors and all of that. So pretty much all of you might have uh, interacted with chatbots. Okay. All right. So with this, let's move on to the next section, building a bot with sales IQ strips. So let, let me just tell you about one of the most important and powerful platforms that we have uh, in uh, Zoho Sales IQ for you to build your uh, bot on Sales IQ scripts. So this is a bot building platform that uses um, Deluge uh, as its scripting language. So uh, Deluge, as you all know, is Zoho's low code online scripting language that's used for rapid application development. So with this particular platform, you can create the bot of your dreams. It means you can customize every single feature of the bot from scratch to match your business requirements. So this uh, UI actually has a default code that is given for you. You can either use the default code and make changes to the default code, or you can entirely delete it and go ahead with writing your own code. So this is all purely based on your own requirements. And this platform mainly functions on something called handlers. So these handlers are where the code for the bot is added to define all of the 
functionality. So I'll tell you about these handlers as well uh, when I'm talking about this particular platform. But first, let me uh, get you started with the flow. So basically, this is how the flow goes. A visitor lands on your business website. And if this particular visitor matches the criteria that is set inside your Zobot, uh, which we will be looking at uh, in a quick demo uh, later on, the bot will trigger a message to the visitor. So if not, it doesn't trigger a message and the visitor must proceed to initiating a chat with the Zobot. And when the visitor sends out a message, the message handler comes into play. And this is going to check if the context in the visitor's message exists. And if it does, it will collect all of the inputs that it can find in the message. Otherwise, it's going to look for another message that matches the existing context. Once the message handler is successfully executed, the context handler starts executing. And this will be invoked after collecting all of the necessary inputs for a particular context, that is to perform a particular action, maybe something like submitting a form uh, or something, all right? So this is the basic flow of how the sales IQ uh, scripts platform functions. So moving on to the backbone of the sales IQ scripts platform, the handlers. So it consists of four major handlers. You have the trigger handler, message handler, context handler, and failure handler. Let's talk about them. Let's look at each one of these handlers one at a time. So the first one is the trigger handler. So basically, this is a piece of sales IQ scripts that is used to invoke a custom action or message by the bot when the visitors visit your website. So the trigger is going to be executed only when the rule that you set in the trigger section in the bot configuration area matches your visitor's criteria. So it's basically a personalized proactive chat invite that you send out to your visitor. And with these trigger messages, you can attract customers to your business. You can make them your prospects because who doesn't like voluntary help, right? So it's pretty much like a welcome desk at a car showroom. So once you enter the showroom, there's always someone who walks up to you and greets you and asks you what you need help with or uh, which car uh, models you want to look at, right? So the trigger handler in the Sales IQ Scripts platform works in the same way. Then comes your message handler. So this one is actually a process of reactive engagement by the bot. So this handler will be invoked whenever the bot receives a message from the website visitor. So the combination of messages that you receive from the website visitor will be analyzed and stored inside the message handler already. And then the bot will respond to the visitors based on the question um, that they receive from the available set of answers. So basically the first response uh, that comes in from the visitor is handled uh, inside your uh, message handler uh, in a particular section. And then the subsequent questions are also handled uh, in a different part of the message handler. So basically your entire conversation is processed inside the message handler of the Zobot. As the name implies, it processes the messages that are received from your visitor. And the best example that can help you relate better is that of a call center. So you basically call a support center and you tell the representative that you have trouble with something and then they're going to respond to you with a solution, right? They don't voluntarily call you. That's also how the message handler functions. Only when a message is received from the visitor's side, the bot is going to respond with a corresponding answer. Then there is the context handler. So before talking about the context handler, I'd like to tell you about what a context in a bot is. So a context is actually a conversational equivalent to a web form. So you know, all of you know that web forms are used to collect uh, a lot of inputs, a bunch of inputs from the visitor and then perform a single action. Similarly, a context is a definition of a web form that collects multiple inputs in a conversational manner and then executes an action, which is the context handler. So this particular handler can work in association with the trigger handler and the message handler. So basically it returns a context instead of a message reply. So uh, a simple example that can help you understand the concept of the context handler better is that of a basic web form. So any website that you hop onto, you, you see a, a form, uh, maybe something, uh, that lets you enroll for a, a course or something that helps you subscribe to a, 
uh, websites or a product's newsletter, a company's newsletter. So basically, in all of these forms, you enter a bunch of details, say, for example, your name and uh, your uh, email address, your contact uh, details and all of that. And then you click on submit, right? So when you click on submit, there is an action that is performed. So basically, this particular web form collects a set of inputs which are your name, your email, and other contact details, and it performs an action, which is a submit action. So when you click on submit, you will be subscribed to the company's newsletter. So this process is also exactly how your context handler in the Zobot functions. Finally, we have the failure handler. So this one gets invoked when uh, the actions returned in the other handlers uh, fail to execute. So the inputs here will be the details of the visitor, uh, the cause of the failure and the previous response for the object due to which the action had failed and this handler will be uh, disabled by default but if you wish to set up uh, failure responses then you can enable it so this one can be uh, configured uh, in case chats are forwarded to your operators when they are offline and uh, operators are unavailable during business hours operator email is invalid or is inactive inside your sales IQ portal or if you've exceeded the character limit in the, uh, or the visitor has exceeded the character uh, limit uh, in the reply. So while we're at this, let me also quickly show you a bot that was built using the Sales IQ scripts platform deployed on a website. And for this, I will be sharing my screen. I hope my uh, screen is visible to all of you. So here we have a website and here I have a bot that has been deployed here. So this one is a real estate bot uh, that helps real estate agents pick up chats. So this one right here has triggered a message since uh, the visitor criteria has been matched. And uh, when I say I'm looking for a property, it's gonna give me a bunch of options that I can choose from. So these options that you see here are uh, rich text options that uh, Sales IQ's Zobot offers for you. So these uh, uh, rich text formats are available on all platforms that are provided in Sales IQ. So these ones are called suggestions. So I'm just gonna click on buy an apartment or a house. So it's gonna ask me to pick a location. So I can just click on set location. All right, so here, I can just click on send location. I can pick a location and send it. And uh, it's gonna give me the number of houses or apartments in the selected area. So I'm just gonna say, I need an apartment. And it's asking me if I want an old construction or a new construction, the price range. So these widgets are all the rich text options that Sales IQ provides you. So here are a bunch of different properties along with uh, the images that have been uh, displayed here for me. I can choose any one of these and then I can schedule a meeting uh, so that I can go and look at the property in person. So here using the calendar widget, I'm going to be choosing the date and here I can enter my registered email for uh, the bot to confirm my appointment. So this goes on and on. So this has three different flows that I can choose from and uh, it allows you to use a lot of rich text it, may, it allows you to make your conversation more appealing and all of that so let's get back to our uh, session and uh, let me talk to you about uh, plain text urls images and other rich text inside the zobot platform so the zobot not only allows you to use text but also widgets like calendars articles um, urls uh, that can help you ease your customers experience for this, we have two categories of features called input cards and display cards. So first we look at what input cards are. So these are the different types of actions used by Zobots to procure inputs from the visitors. So uh, we have a lot of different commonly used input cards. We have calendars, sliders, location widgets, response suggestions, and all of that. So the one that you see here are response suggestions. So the visitor can choose one of these uh, options and then the flow will uh, go accordingly and uh, then you have calendars date and time slots so here this one is the date and time slots widget so that allows you to choose a date and one particular free slot in the uh, chosen date and then you have the feedback widgets you have uh, 
like on like, you have star rating and you have uh, smiley ratings. You have all of these options with respect to input cards. And then you have display cards. So display widgets will help you display a lot of rich content uh, that consists of you know different formats, maybe images, links uh, to articles, videos, and um, all of that. So here you have uh, links, you have articles, and then you have images to make your conversation more appealing and to assist your visitors with. So this is just a small bunch of options that I'm showing you or talking about. Uh, you have a wide range of options uh, uh, that you can pick from and use inside your uh, sales IQ uh, scripts platform or dialogue flow. Uh, you, you don't have to worry about the platform that you're choosing. These are available for all platforms uh, that are available to build your Zobot on. So Zobots in Sales IQ are radically changing end user experiences and developer frameworks. And they've taken over a myriad of industries ranging from uh, uh, aviation to hospitality to uh, e-commerce. And uh, all of these industries need integrations with multiple products and services to keep their customer base intact and to stay updated about customer activity on the website. So to facilitate this, Zobots in Sales IQ have a feature called connection. For example, you can take an example as simple as an all online automobile service website that allows visitors uh, to maybe schedule test drives and vehicle services. So you can create a connection with a calendar service like Zoho Calendar or Google Calendar, and you can record all of the test drives and services that have been scheduled. So the Zobot will basically collect all of the details required to schedule an appointment, like uh, maybe the name, uh, the visitor's email, phone number, location, etc., and then fix an appointment and record it on your calendar. So this way you can keep track of all of your appointments and make sure you don't miss out on any of them. This uh, particular uh, section of the session will talk about what connections are, how they can be created and how they can help businesses save time and effort. So these are interfaces that are used to integrate third party services with your Zoho service. In this case, Zoho Sales IQ and these connections are basically used in a URL invocation task to access authenticated data. So the, this is basically a framework that will allow authenticated requests uh, to uh, an external service easily ruling out the hassle of maintaining all of your tokens. And uh, to establish a, a connection, it is necessary to provide a connection name and an authentication type amongst other uh, details. So when you provide these details, uh, Sales IQ is going to take care of the authentication and establish a safe connection with either your Zoho apps or external ones. And as you all know, in Deluge, we have four different HTTP methods and uh, we have three authentication types. So here in this particular uh, configuration, OAuth 1 and OAuth 2 will be used to establish uh, secure access. So before we move on to the next uh, section of this uh, particular session, let me just go back to my Sales IQ portal and show you how you can quickly set up a bot. So uh, I want to make this more interesting. So I'd love it if all of you can join me while I'm doing this. So you can start setting up a Zobot inside your Sales IQ portal along with me. So let me quickly share my screen. So this is my uh, sales IQ portal. So here I'm going to navigate to settings and then I'm going to click on Zobot and click on add bot. So I'm just going to give my bot a name and then I will choose from the given platform. So I can choose either the Codeless Bot Builder, Sales IQ Scripts, Zia Skills, Webhooks or any other NLP platforms. So I'm just going to choose sales like your scripts and I'm going to click on next. Here I can just provide a description. And I will choose a brand. And I will associate departments. So all departments will be associated by default. And in case I delete this, 
I can choose the departments that I want to uh, connect this particular brand with. And then I will choose the bot working hours, standard business hours, non-business hours, or only when my operators are offline. Once this is done, I click on next, and then I will choose the bot audience. So this will be set to all visitors by default, but you can also add custom rules. You have a lot of different conditions that you can choose from. Say for example, search engine is Google. All right, so my bot will only trigger a message if uh, the visitor is accessing my web page uh, from uh, the Google search engine. All right, then I will set when I want the bot to initiate a chat, either when the visitor lands on the site and spends a specific amount of time or when he clicks on the chat widget or when he performs a custom action. Following that, I will set up the bot's response interval. So I, I don't want to keep my visitors waiting, so I'll just click on immediate. And you also have uh, the option of configuring chat inactivity actions. This is in case the visitor has been idle on your website for a while and you just want to give them a warning message. You want to tell them that they've been inactive and that uh, the chat will close automatically. Uh, they continue to remain uh, idle. All right, so you can configure that here. And finally, you have the most important option, allowing handoff to operators. So when enabled, this particular option will let your visitors connect with a human agent in the middle of a conversation with a bot in case they want to connect to a, uh, an agent and you know uh, talk about the specifics of a particular query. Uh, in case they want to have a more detailed conversation, they can also opt uh, to connect with a uh, human agent during the bot conversation. And for that, you will have to keep this particular option enabled while you set up your bot. And once this is done, I click on next. And since I have chosen the sales IQ scripts platform, my uh, deluge script builder opens up. So here, as I had already mentioned, you will see the default code uh, inside all of the handlers. So I can either keep this as my base code and start editing the code based on my use case, or I can delete this entirely and start from scratch. So here you have drag and drop elements that make it easy and uh, very quick for you to uh, finish building your bot. You can uh, drag and drop these elements inside the code. And you also have an option to choose a template. So we have given you a bunch of templates that we you can choose from. So we have templates for um, a bunch of commonly used uh, platforms. So you can use these as well. We have industry-based and product-based uh, templates here. And let's move on to connection. So we were talking about integrating your external services with the Zoobot, right? So for that, you will have to click on connections. When you do so, you will land inside your uh, connections dashboard and you'll be able to see all of the connections that you have created so far. And when you want to create a new connection, you can just click on create connection and uh, you can choose uh, a service of your choice and you can just uh, provide a name here for your connection and your connection link name will be automatically generated. So this connection link name is going to be the unique name for your uh, connection. So make sure you use this in all of your APIs to make sure your connections are working and you know data is fed to the appropriate services. So once you're done, you click on create and connect and then uh, there will be an authentication. You'll have to enter your API key and click on connect and both of your services will be connected. Next, we have answer bots. So the answer bots in Zoho Sales IQ, they are NLP powered um, smart support assistants that can simulate a conversation with website visitors in a natural language. So basically, whenever a brand is created inside Sales IQ, an answer bot for the corresponding brand will be created automatically. And uh, the bot will be created using the brand name Elias with the default configuration. So these answer bots, they work based on your resource module. 
uh, when I say resources, I mean your articles and FAQs. So uh, the more the number of articles and FAQs inside your knowledge base, the more powerful your answer bot will be. So basically, when the visitor sends out uh, a message asking the bot a question, the bot is going to analyze this particular question and it's going to look for keywords in this particular uh, statement, all right? So when one of the keywords matches the articles or FAQs that you have in your knowledge base, it's going to pick up these articles, these this bunch of articles and FAQs, and it's going to display it to the visitor as a response. So this makes the work easier for uh, both your operators and for your bots, because sometimes there are a lot of repeated queries that come in on your website, uh, maybe uh, something about a cancellation policy, or something about returns and refunds if you're if you own an e-commerce website so for cases like these you can configure a lot of articles and faqs and you can let the answer bot do the job so all the answer bot has to do is look for a keyword match the keyword with the articles and F keywords in the articles and faqs in your knowledge base and return a response so your answer bots work based on your knowledge base so if you want to uh, configure an answer bot uh, for your website, you will have to set up four different sections. So first you have the bot profile, then you have resources, you have to set up the res uh, response configuration and then behavior configuration. So uh, I will show you this directly inside uh, the UI because I don't want to bore you with a bunch of slides. I'm just going to go to the UI and show you in life about how you can set up this answer bot for your website. Right. So let me just go back. So here inside settings and under bot, I have answer bot. So I'm going to show you a bot that has been uh, configured already, Zilka Travels. So the step one is bot profile. So here you give your answer bot a name. You can also add a picture or an avatar for your bot. Then uh, you can add a description for your bot. Uh, this is for the visitor to understand the personality of the bot he or she is interacting with. Then you can set working hours for your bot so your bot can take over when your operators are not available or uh, busy. You can configure them to assist uh, visitors after standard business hours and you can choose from uh, the following options. Then you can associate uh, departments of your choice. So the bot will only pick up visitor chats that are directed to the corresponding departments. So you also need to remember that you can uh, only choose departments uh, that you're associated to and uh, departments that are associated with the corresponding brand and uh, your private and disabled departments will not be displayed for selection. So before we move on to the next section, uh, I want to tell you about the preview window that you see here on the right side of the screen. So here you can keep reviewing all of the changes that you make at each stage of setting up your answer bot. So this will give you an idea of what each configuration will look like inside the live chat window of your website. So once you're done configuring the uh, first step of the bot, the bot profile, you click on next and you move on to step two. Selection of resources. So resources are basically the brain of your answer bot. These resources, um, uh, your FAQs, your articles and uh, resources called small talk are the ones that are used to be uh, that will be used to train your AI bot. So the bot will basically use these resources, analyze visitor queries and answer them. So your resources module has to be perfect and strong for the answer bot uh, to function effectively. So you basically, you have a considerable amount of uh, resources in your uh, uh, knowledge base. You can improve the efficiency and the accuracy of bot replies. So here at Sales IQ, we recommend having a minimum of 50 resources in each category. So the more the resources, the more powerful your bot will be. And a strong resource base for your answer bot will reduce the workload of your operators and increase uh, resolution rate as well. And here inside the select resources section, you can either choose FAQs or articles, or you can choose both. And following that, you will select the small talk package. So basically, a small talk package is a collection of um, a lot of different informal phrases. Uh, say, for example, hey, hello, hey there, and um, good morning, and all of that. Just casual phrases that a visitor can send during a conversation. And the responses that can be given by the bot in response to these 
messages that are sent by the visitor. So basically you have questions, possible questions from the visitor and possible answers that the bot can give. So here the default package that we have will be selected by default, but you can choose a package of your choice. So here I'm just choosing casual. Once this resource selection is done, we click on next and move on to response configuration. So here in this section, you have three different uh, options. You have answer found. You configure three different uh, cases, answer found, answer not found, and callbacks. So here inside, what is answer found? If the bot knows the answer to a visitor query, if it finds the right answer, it will pick the right article or the FAQ and it will display it. So this is the answer found case. So here you will enter uh, the suggestion text. This is the text that will be displayed above the list of articles that the bot displays to the visitor. Then you can enable or disable uh, follow-up actions using the toggle button. So you choose the follow-up actions that you want to set up uh, for your bot. So we have three here. You can choose whichever ones that you want. So here you can customize the responses that you have for uh, each uh, case, each follow-up action. So this is fully customizable. So basically when you enable this option, the follow-up actions option, you have to choose at least one follow-up action. You can't just enable it and not choose anything. You have to choose a minimum of one follow-up actions if you enable the toggle. Then we move on to the next case, answer not found. So if the bot, this is the exact opposite of the first case, answer found. So the bot does not know the answer to a visitor query and it could not find any matching articles or FAQs, it will be the answer not found case. So here again, you can set up the uh, fallback text, uh, something like, sorry, I couldn't find any resource to your um, search. And uh, then you can also configure the bot to display related resources when it does not find the uh, articles or FAQs that match the visitor's query uh, perfectly. So for that, you'll have to enable this particular uh, toggle button. Then you can also enter a, a suggestion text to be displayed here when related articles are listed. Then again, uh, in the same way, you can configure follow-up actions and these actions are again customizable. Then you have fallbacks. So this gets invoked if there is an unexpected failure in the configuration and the bot could not fetch or respond to the visitor's question. This is similar to the uh, answer not found uh, case, but this happens, this uh, gets invoked only when there is a failure in the configuration. So here you will configure the failure handler text. So you have a lot of different cases here. You have operators busy, uh, when operators are unavailable, if there is a system failure. So you can configure uh, the messages here, fallback messages here for each of the cases separately. And uh, then you can enable disable follow-up actions using the toggle button. Once this is done, you will click on next and move on to the behavioral configuration. So here you configure the different behavioral aspects of your answer bot. So the first one is proactive interaction, setting the proactive interaction criteria. So here you choose when you want the bot to trigger your website visitor with a, a message and uh, you can enable or disable this option using the toggle here. So you have the, these different options when the visitor lands on the site, spends uh, a couple of seconds when it when he clicks on a chat widget when he or she performs a custom action then you configure uh, the greeting message that you want the bot to send out to your visitor when the condition is satisfied so this can either be in text or json format then you have uh, the response interval you set up the time for which uh, the bot's typing status must be uh, displayed to your visitors so again i will set this to maybe immediate then you have chat inactivity actions like we had inside uh, our Zobot module. So uh, you can uh, set up chat inactivity rules. Uh, these are rules that will notify your visitor that he's been idle on the site for a considerable amount of time during the chat. 
So based on the inactivity time set in this section, the bot will send out messages uh, to the visitor and uh, it will end uh, the corresponding conversation. Then you have handoff as usual to let your visitors connect to a human agent uh, during a bot conversation. When all of this is done, you will click on done and your answer bot will be deployed on the chosen website. So that's how easy it is to uh, build an answer bot. So all you have to do is add a lot of articles inside your uh, resources module. So let me show you the resources module as well. So we have it here, we have articles. So you add a lot of articles inside your resources module, you add a lot of FAQs, and that's all you have to do to set up your uh, answer bot uh, on the website. So we have a lot of different FAQs here as well. So inside these FAQs, you can have uh, one or two, to, uh, uh, two or more than two uh, different ways of answer uh, each question. The ways in which the visitor might ask the questions, variants. So uh, whatever question the visitor uh, sends out to the bot, it will be able to handle it. So to uh, have a fully functional answer bot on your website, all you have to do is equip your uh, knowledge base with as many articles and FAQs as possible. Then comes another new addition, the codeless bot. So this is a code three role based chatbot builder um, that is available in sales IQ that can create a conversational bot without any coding skills whatsoever and it can control conversation flows like a flowchart. So this basically helps you generate a lot of uh, qualified leads, capture a lot of data and personalize visitor flow in real time. And here in the codeless bot platform, uh, you can use blocks like buttons, names, email cards, uh, calendar, location, etc. That will help you collect pieces of information needed from the visitor and then make smart conversations, send personalized messages, perform actions based on their uh, need. So let's go back to our UI. And I'll show you what the codeless bot interface uh, looks like. So this is a, a codeless bot that I have uh, built already. So let's look at some important terms uh, inside that are used inside the codeless bot platform. So the first one uh, that you will look at is the card. So these define the functions that are performed by the bot. So you can add, remove, or rearrange uh, cards to you know, change the bot's functionality. Then you have something called as the card holder. So let me show you what a card holder is. So this one right here, the plus icon that you see right here is a card holder. So you click or drag and drop the block to the card holder to add a card inside the bot's flow. Say for example, I want to add a quick reply. I just have to drag it and drop it here. That's how easy it is to uh, build a bot with a codeless bot builder platform. So I just have to configure my message, give my card a name. I can add attachments, configure dynamic text and click on save. So instead of writing uh, code to configure your bot, you just have to drag and drop the elements that you want and sales IQ will do the bot building for you. So then you have the different categories of uh, blocks. Uh, so these are the different cards that you can use to configure your bot actions. Then you have uh, the connected link. So this one right here is a connected link. So these are the defined connections. That is one block is connected to the other. So this will be a connected link. And uh, once executed, the flow will move on from this card to the next card. Then you have open links like these ones, the ones uh, that have dotted lines. So these are the undefined connections. So here you add cards to uh, these open links to continue the flow. So then you have a uh, link tag. So this link tag is used to denote the rules or other conditions of uh, one particular uh, card. And uh, then you have the preview option. So this one lets you preview the working of the bot as you make changes inside your uh, flow. It's going to highlight the particular uh, flow when you see it here, All right? So once I move on, uh, it's going to just show me how I'm moving ahead. 
So it's as easy as this, choose a slot. Then I have to share my location. All right. Then you have controls in the uh, codeless bot. So you have uh, the drag and drop control that we just saw. So dragging and dropping blocks inside your uh, codeless bot builder. You have link, attach, and detach. You have auto arrange, and you also have uh, the zoom option. So the first one was the drag and drop that we had looked at uh, earlier. So you click on the card holder, you choose an uh, you choose an option of your choice, you choose a button of your choice, and you drop it inside your uh, building mode. And you would have to configure your message, and uh, then about uh, then if you've uh, chosen multiple options or single option, you will have to configure your options, configure minimum selection, maximum selection, and click save, and your card will be added. So this is the drag and drop control. Then you have something called as auto arrange. So if you have a cluttered board, you can use the auto arrange feature to you know, rearrange and organize your uh, flow. And uh, then you have uh, the zoom option. So as the flow grows, sometimes you won't be able to get a clear picture on your device's available screen size. So here you can use the zoom option to get a full flow, or if you want to magnify a particular flow in cases like these, and you can also zoom out and look at the entire flow like this. Then we had already looked at uh, the preview option. So when you create your flow, you can check it in real time using the bot preview option and uh, then publish it upon completion. So you click on the eye icon uh, that you see here and on the bottom right corner of the bot building board. And like I had mentioned, once you preview the flow, the particular flow will be highlighted. And once the bot flow is complete, uh, you can click on the publish button on the top right corner. But before you publish your bot, you need to make sure that you don't have any open links like these. You make sure uh, you've closed all of the flows properly. So once you have no open links, you can just go ahead and publish the bot. Otherwise, it's going to throw an uh, error message saying that the flow action is not complete. That's because we have an open link here. So let me just quickly add. Uh, let me just quickly add a card. So now that all of my flows are complete, I can just go ahead and publish my bot. So my bot has been published successfully. So this is how quickly and easily uh, you can build your bot with a Codeless Bot Builder platform. So let me tell you about the block categories as well. You have response blocks uh, to you know, share articles or videos, and then you have in input blocks that will help you collect inputs from your visitors. Then you have uh, different actions that can be performed uh, using action blocks. You have uh, blocks like name, email, phone, company, and visitor fields. And then you also have integration blocks in case you want to, uh, you know, perform actions with your external services or Zoho services. So now let's move on uh, to the next uh, part of this session, NLP platforms and other integrations that are possible with uh, the Zobot. So the first one is uh, about the Zia skills platform. So Zia is actually a conversational bot building assistant uh, that uses uh, natural language understanding 
to process and perform defined skills and actions to respond to visitors' query. So with a developer console like Zias, you can define a unique set of actions depending on your requirements. So with Zia, you can either directly answer a question or uh, you can start constructing your answer by fetching data from sales IQ. And uh, you can also perform operations dynamically based on the visitor. So the flow that you see here on the screen is how a basic conversation uh, runs inside the Zia skills platform. Then we have uh, the Dialogflow platform. Uh, so if you're a Google end-to-end -end Google user, you can choose the Dialogflow platform. Uh, you can build agents inside your Dialogflow uh, uh, platform and you can deploy it. So Dialogflow is actually an end-to-end -end build once, deploy everywhere development suite. So again, this is going to help you create a lot of conversational interfaces for websites, mobile apps, and popular messaging platforms. So it'll uh, let you create conversational tools without the complications of having to handle natural language processing. And uh, you can use it to build interfaces like chatbots or conversational IVRs that will help you uh, have natural rich interactions between your users and your business. So the Dialogflow platform functions on the basis of uh, bot agents and intents. So intents, uh, are what are used to train your uh, dialogue flow agents. So these intents, each of these intents have a bunch of different training phrases uh, that are uh, exactly like the phrases that you have inside the small talk module in uh, uh, Zoho Sales IQ. So these are different possibilities, different query possibilities that might come in from visitors. So you train your dialogue flow agent using these uh, training phrases and equip them to answer visitor queries. Next about the Watson platform. So this is powered by IBM. It helps you build a powerful bot uh, for your website and uh, you can customize uh, these assistants according to your business needs using the Zobot platform. And you can also deploy them across multiple channels and uh, help your customers uh, whenever and wherever they, they need your help. And uh, this particular platform knows when to uh, search for an answer from a knowledge base, when to ask for clarity, and also when to direct your visitors to a human. So you can integrate this assistant uh, that you have built using the Watson Assistant platform with the Zobot, and you can let them serve your website visitors very effectively. So this is a conversational flow uh, inside the Watson platform. Then we have Microsoft Azure, uh, which is a, a bot building platform from uh, Microsoft. This is similar to the other platforms that we had previously looked at. So you can basically create a virtual assistance on the Microsoft Azure platform and you can integrate it with the Zobot and deploy it on your website. So the configurations inside all of these external NLP platforms are pretty much the same. So if you uh, learn how to configure one uh, virtual assistant in one platform, you'll be able to do the rest as well. Then we have webhooks. So webhooks are a useful and easy way to implement event reactions. So you can hook up your Zobot with internal services with the help of webhooks. So you integrate sales like your Zobot with your internal services. This way you can get your bot up and running on the website and uh, you can lend a hand to your support executive. So this is when you already have a fully built bot engine. So uh, you could have built that bot engine using any platform, it doesn't matter. You can just integrate it with the Zobot using these uh, webhooks. So here sales IQ will send events to the webhook when a variety of interactions will happen with the bot. So while we're still talking about bots, I want to tell you about another important and powerful feature uh, that we have uh, on Sales Cycle 2.4. So usually to know everything about the customer, 
operators find the need to navigate through multiple applications, right? So this can eventually lead to a lot of distraction and also result in the loss of a lot of valuable time. So to eliminate this and save time for both operators and website visitors alike, Zoho Sales IQ has a feature called widgets. So basically, these are interfaces in which you can bring data from external sources inside your chat window. You can either pull data from any application and you can display them in Sales IQ's chat window, or you can push data from Sales IQ to any application with uh, actionable elements. For example, if you have an organization with 100 operators and these operators all require access to your customer details, you don't necessarily have to give them all access to the complete visitor data collection. With widgets, you can pull out and display only the information that is required by operators to help them answer visitor questions. So basically, you use them inside Sales IQ to display different categories of information like you see here on the screenshot uh, that I've added here. These are going to make your operators jobs easier. So they are highly customizable and each widget has is made up of different sections and inside sections you have a bunch of elements and some actions. So let me help you understand this better. So this is a widget that you see here. So it has different sections. So customer level is a section, account info is a section and recent purchases is a section. This is a use case uh, in which um, we have details about the customer's recent purchases. Uh, his personal details and uh, details about his membership and all of that. So this is a section and inside each section you have a lot of different elements. So here your login ID, full name, gender and the created on date. These are all individual elements and you have actions. So actions here are upgrade, downgrade or cancel. So when you click on this particular uh, action, uh, something happens. For example, a form opens up and you can fill up details. Uh, that are necessary to upgrade or downgrade a membership. So basically widgets are constructed like this. They have a bunch of sections, they have elements, and with these elements, you can also perform actions uh, that will open up a form or something like that. So I'll be talking about form controllers next. So form controllers in Sales IQ, they are used to collect multiple structured data as inputs to perform a particular action. So this is a basic form that you see. So we had looked at um, upgrade or downgrade button in the previous uh, slide inside a widget. So when that button is clicked upon, this is the form that will open up. So these forms can be used as a part of a widget's action response to collect a lot of data from your operator and then push that data to any application. For example, your operator can collect information uh, such as a complaint from the customer then you can create a ticket in your support desk application with the help of a form. So that's a simple example. So here we have the membership form. So this is what a form is made of. So a form controller usually has a header and then it has a, a description about the form. Then it has a bunch of inputs and after the inputs are entered, we have actions that can be clicked upon. So here your header is the membership form that's written here. Then you have a small description that will talk about what the form is for. And then we have different inputs. So we have customer name, we have customer email, then we have a, a dynamic drop down uh, to select the country. Then we have uh, inputs like radio buttons, you have check boxes, and each of these are different inputs of a form. And finally, we have actions. So here we have the submit and the cancel uh, actions. So you can click on any one of these. And then we have a feature called plugs in Zoho Sales IQ. So this is basically a function with configured uh, inputs and configured outputs. So this function can be uh, implemented using uh, Deluge scripts. So uh, the plug integration is supported on uh, the Codeless Bot uh, platform. So you have to create uh, plugs with uh, the input parameters and output parameters. And you can choose these uh, inside the Codeless Bot platform. So let me show you where you can choose these inside the Codeless Bot platform. Quickly sharing my screen again. So here inside your action blocks section, you will see something called plugs. So here you can select the plugs that you have configured. 
So when you add plugs, they're all going to be displayed here and you can choose that plug. So you have your plug inputs and your plug outputs. So you can choose a variable and you can give your variable a name here. And you can just click on save and your plug card will be added. So whatever plugs you create inside sales like you can be chosen here when uh, this particular uh, action block is used in the codeless bot builder. So with this, we've come to the end of our webinar. So in this uh, session, we had looked at uh, bots in sales IQ, different bot platforms that are available in uh, Zoho Sales IQ about answer bots that work based on your knowledge base, about codeless bot platform, and uh, how you can integrate your Zobot with other platforms uh, like Dialogflow and Watson Assistant in Azure. Then how you can integrate a fully built bot engine to the Zobot platform with Webhooks. And then about uh, bringing your apps inside uh, Zoho Sales IQ with widgets and creating customizing forms and then also about uh, plugs in Zoho Sales IQ. So now uh, we have time for all of your questions. So please post whatever questions you have. And uh, if you had doubts about any part of this particular session, you can keep posting them here and we'll uh, answer them as soon as possible. And uh, not to worry if you've missed out on specific parts of the webinar. We're going to be sending you a follow-up mail along with the recording of this entire session. So you can review it and uh, start setting up bots for your business as well. And we'll also send you uh, links to our help documentation um, uh, so that you can have additional resources with respect to uh, helping you build your bot. 